Hey there, today I have another episode of the Top 30. And uh, if you're here for the first time looking for a Top 10 list or a Hot 30 comic book list or something of that nature, I guarantee that this is going to be better. Uh, this is hands down the best 30 minutes that you can spend of your comic book day. And the only way that we can make that possible is with an excellent guest. And today is no exception. Uh, today, we're going to welcome in Bucky's Books, and we'll bring Bucky here into the interview. How you doing, Bucky? Hey, how's it going? Nice to see you. I'm doing great. Yeah, thank you for being here. Um, I'm really excited to talk to you today. Uh, we want to get into things around selling comic books, particularly in live claim sales. But before we do, I was hoping you could just tell everybody uh, kind of who you are, a little bit about your comic book journey, or anything you'd like to share. Uh, well, I mean, a lot of people do know me, but those that don't, lifelong collector. So I started it uh, probably about 12 years old and uh, just been selling uh, cons first around like 2017. So it's starting to be a long time now that I've been selling. It used to be a very short time, but now we're in 2024. I've been selling on Instagram for, uh, I guess, over three years now. It's like some one of the first people uh, to sell with uh, the comic shop I was part of. And um, I got a lot of a lot of knowledge, I feel like, after all this time. So, but personally, like, I just, I love all comics, every single genre uh, to a point. So that's pretty much it for me. Fantastic. No, I, I can't wait to tap into your your wealth of knowledge. I and mean, three years uh, is an eternity, uh, <laughs> particularly with the journey <laughs> we've all been on and and what we, we did during uh, COVID and everything. So uh, I want to jump into it. But before we do, I have to ask you the question that I ask uh, all of my guests. And it's I feel like it's the most important question. Direct or newsstand? Hmm. <laughs> newsstand, for sure. They got me. That's what. That's oh, the problem. That is incorrect. I'm sorry. I yeah. Probably in your world. <laughs> but is it, it is the truth. You know, I, I kind of just kind of followed that crowd. On there, I think uh, 80s, 90s, 2000 stuff, it's so hard to find something that stands out. And that's, yeah. a, that's a nice little thing to do, especially since we all kind of grew. I think you and I kind of grew up around the same time going to 7-Eleven and just watching, seeing all those copies just destroyed on those newsstands. Oh <laughs> Everybody's picking them up and checking them out, you know. So I remember they are there. 7-Eleven and then also uh, Thrifty, uh, Thrifty Drugstore. Thrifty. Um, they had the spinner rack and I, I, my heart would break every time I would go in there for new comics because they would all be folded over like, you know, maybe 45 degrees as people were like pulling them down. And man, uh, those were the good old days. Yep. All new stands there. Right. So very, but you cool. know, um, getting, getting that nine, eight, a little bit harder. That's all. It's I can tough. Say. It's tough. Now, as provocative as this question is, uh, I, I think I've got one for you that I personally feel is a, a little spicy here. So hopefully, uh, you know, this will be a nice segue into our, our main topic. But I, I got to ask you, as a, as a veteran seller, is selling comic books fun? Oh, is that spicy? Of course it's fun. <laughs> there's aspects of it that are fun. There's, a, there's all that prep before and the sending after and the invoicing that is not fun. But I think the fun comes when when you've got it all together, right? You have it all together and you're ready for the show. And during the show, it's super fun. It just rolls off. The more prepared you are for some for something, the easier it is and the more fun it can be. So I love doing the shows. I love seeing everybody come back that like, you know, always buys from me. That's always the fun part. So I'm, I'm going to just say there's pieces of it that are fun. There's pieces of it that keep me up at night. That right. And, and that's why, <laughs> yeah, that's why I asked because it does look like you're having a lot of fun. When, you, when you're watching a, a Bucky's Books live claim sale, it does look fun, uh, I, mm -hmm. I think. And I, and I want to get into kind of what the experience is for a buyer, but it, it, it looks fun. But I know there's a lot of work that uh, goes into it, uh, you know, and yeah. we'll kind of get into some of those particulars too. But um, yeah, I, uh -huh. I, I, I am genuinely curious just about the fun. But I think what's happening now, as always happens, is we start talking about comics and we start... Uh, branching off. Uh, we really need to get back and stay focused. Let's jump on the, the sacred timeline. The sacred timeline. We, we talked a little bit about you, but I, I am curious, like, is 
are you a one man crew? Like, what is the Bucky's books mm. operation really like? Because, uh, you know, you're making your live claim sale mm. look, I, I don't want to say flawless, but it's very smooth. Uh, you know, I, I notice like folks will come on, they'll ask for books and then they may not be on your wall, but then you've got them. Like, what does your crew look like? No, oh, I got, I got friends. It is kind of a one man show that, that I bring people in. I try to make it as autonomous as possible. Because once you get past like three people in a room, it gets loud and it gets like everybody wants to be like, you know, another chief in the village and it gets it gets a little discombobulated. It's good to have a head on, on this. So uh, I bring in friends that I know are dependable, good with the camera. Um, definitely. I mean, if we're going to do a show together, then they have to be good at grading. They have to be fair with their prices. So it's a really small list. But if I could do it myself, I would. But it's almost impossible to do it yourself. Okay. Now, yeah. when, when you say you're bringing some other sellers in, like, do you, you do uh, you collaborate on a sale or are you consigning? Yeah. How does that work? I want to do that more now. But I used to just have just to pay like one of my friends like 30 bucks an hour to do the camera or mm -hmm. and then sometimes have a host. You know, sometimes Grails would host me and stuff like that. But if it's my own, I kind of start into like... Uh, having other like, you know, like-minded people in there because it put takes the pressure off of you always having like the baddest stuff, you know? So if everybody contributes, right. then you can kind of just like, every, I'm, I'm more about making life a little simpler now instead of so much pressure filled. Having other people helps. Yeah, that makes sense. And it's like whatever it takes, resources, money um, to help you get the help that you need, it, it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. Now, when, when we're yeah. talking about selling, uh, your primary selling platform is Instagram. Is that right? Yeah, it's pretty much the only one right now. I'll do a show once once a year, like a, a con once a year, something like that. Okay. Right now. Now, and, and we talked a little while ago just about like considering, you know, what to do with eBay and everything. From your experience, I'm curious, what draws you to be a full-time seller on Instagram versus eBay or any other auction site? What, what is it about the Instagram platform? that you like the uh well i think it's the i don't know the camaraderie like you are you do feel like you can instantly see you know within 30 seconds of course the delay but you know people are conversing and i know a lot of the people it there is no fun to ebay <laughs> ebay is listing hell and um it's not really even about the money that you make it's about it's more about that where you can uh, i also hate the 15 percent fees that ebay charges mm -hmm. even though i understand it they have millions of people. They're worth the 15%. I just have a problem with it. And if, if we can sell on our own with a lot of work to get, you know, to have a good show, we should, shouldn't should have to pay it. We should be autonomous. And those that can't should do eBay. But eBay is good for smaller things as well. If you have big books and, and really cool books, I prefer to send on IG where they're popular. They're going to sell. And then kind of like the, the crappier ones, the half off books, if you will sell sure. them on lots on eBay, um, then they can take their 15%. I couldn't care less. Does that make sense? It makes total sense. You mentioned the fees. Now, mm -hmm. I, I have a theory of, of why people choose Instagram. And I feel like it's it's really just to avoid that that huge hit because the, the annoying part for me with, uh, listen, like I understand fees, you have to pay for something. But what I don't like <laughs> about eBay is that you're paying that 15% off of things that, you're not making any money on, particularly like shipping and, and eBay will charge tax. You're not collecting any tax, but you're getting hit with a fee based on the tax that eBay is collecting. And I think that's just absurd. Uh, totally. But I, I think that my working theory, and, and this is why I have you here, because I want you to uh, tell me what you think, is that that is the primary reason that Instagram is chosen is because it's a fee-free platform but it doesn't appear to me as a buyer that it's it's technically, and I want to say this the right way, but it's just it doesn't feel like it's made for e-commerce. It just feels no. like it, it feels like you and some no. other really prominent sellers have figured out to make the best of it. But but why yeah. Instagram versus anything else in terms of the 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 technical aspect? Well, it's where the community grew, especially during COVID. So we all became friends kind of on there. Facebook was first, uh, but I don't like Facebook that much. So there are a lot of Facebook groups and there are sales on Facebook too. They tend to be the, the older crowd though. 
I see a lot of the guys, you know, selling the the silver and gold on there. Mm-hmm. They started it. So it was the Facebook groups first. Um, a friend of mine, Brad from FEF Comics, he showed me the first one. And I was like, oh, that's really interesting. He's like, you know, I don't buy off of there, but that's what's happening. And it kind of like our generation and lower, like I'm 48, but like the guys in their 30s and early 40s, everybody just kind of started going on Instagram on the during COVID. So it kind of organically happened. Like, And I always have to give uh, Ali from, you know, uh, from Elite credit because he popularized that system we went soon after on our own but our first shows were with elite and it was a little ramshackle in the beginning we were trying to figure out how to keep people from getting pissed off and jumping over each other yeah. we, we actually figured it out and actually ali was the first one to do his own show where he was selling one time where he mm-hmm. used the letter and the number you had to claim the letter and the number and right. that solved everything right so we are working around some kind of we were figuring it out instead of like a, a place like um whatnot that figured it out for you. right it were organic. you Absolutely. so did i hear that right what you were you uh were one of the first on elite comics 11 did you you guys collaborated early on okay yeah we were the second people to ever go first one was the thing where he was trying to help out the shops so he was all static right all static posts and he went live with he wanted to help out comic shops that were suffering and i was part of the comic shop at the time Royal Collectibles in New York was first, and we were the second debt. All, all we did was look at what Royal Collectibles did wrong and said, okay, let's, that's the only, the only uh, show we had to go off of to say, let's do something different yeah. at that time. It feels like it almost, yes, it was born out of a necessity, but it happened kind of overnight. Like, I think you guys were like figuring it out in real time, trying different things, and then all of a sudden kind of hit your stride, and then everything was up and running. And, and I, I had made note that, you know, I, I wanted to think about, you know, what is the role of social media in, in selling comic books today? Because they've always been social. It's always been a big part of, of what uh, I've enjoyed, uh, you know, even back when I was a kid, you know, rolling down to get my uh, thrifty ice cream and my comics off the spinner rack. And, and that was great. But what I was doing is I was preparing for the weekend when I was going to get together with friends and we were going to uh, trade comics and swap them and read them and things like that. And then, you know, bag and board them and, and talk about the stories and everything. And it's always been a, a big part of, I think, comic book collecting. And it, it's interesting now to see buyers and sellers and social media. It feels like you can't have one without the other now. Is that right? Pretty much. I think what would have happened is when we were 10, that's what is normal for 10 year olds to do, or at least back when we were kids. Right. If we didn't have social media now, we wouldn't be getting together because we're in our forties and people don't do that. They have kids, they have their jobs and stuff. So it right. enables us to be those 10 year olds again, just, you know, more virtually, but we get to do it. And to me, that's what keeps us young and keeps us more in the hobby. Imagine, Absolutely. imagine like we couldn't do this right now. We haven't seen each other yet. Right. I know. I know. It's it just crazy. Yeah. 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 No, I feel like uh, just kind of knocking on your door one day and just like, hey, I am live for your live claim sale just to <laughs> just to throw you off. But it, it but what I'm what, what I would want to see is I want to see the prep. Right. I'm, I'm genuinely fascinated. And let, and before we get into some of the prep, because I want to just explain why I'm asking these questions, too, is I am very scared of having a line claim sale. Uh, mm. and I don't feel like I have a proper setup. I don't know. I don't have enough experience with like, do you need a studio? And I'll tell you a very quick story too. The the Neil Adams comic book store in the Valley. Um, yes. I went there one day uh, when, I mean, I'm old too. Like you can see, and I'm not, I got nothing to hide. I was down there for a doctor's appointment <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I had, some, I had some time to kill and I went over to his shop um, he wasn't there, but it was still cool to kind of go in. I, there was a door that was just slightly ajar, you know, and I'm, this is the main store that I'm in. And I kind of glanced over and was like, what's, I'm like, is Neil back there? Like what's, what's going on? And I got a little closer. The person behind the counter wasn't real. They were busy. And I just peeked in and it was this entire live claim studio. And it, mm. it reminded me a lot of your setup. Uh, and I'm just, I'm looking at it and I got, <laughs> <laughs> totally like just I, I almost ran out of the store because I'm like, you know, I love collecting, but I do try to sell some books and the whole live claim sale thing. I just don't feel like I'm somebody that's cut out for it. And I would love to hear 
some yeah. of like what what it takes may, maybe like you know just in terms of how you set up how do you actually like what books do you look for what books mm. uh, are are proper or good sellers mm. and things like that okay well this is a lot to unpack here the setup once you get it is easy but getting the proper setup is figuring it out is hard so uh some of the most successful stuff i've seen is guys that just set up um they screw into their walls like four shelves make it the uh make it the uh the rectangle that is a live sale and uh put some numbers under it do some proper lighting and they're good to go everything after that is more of an intangible like having a personality uh mm -hmm. not coming off like a like a douchebag because there's, there's a good amount of people that do you got to love your books you got to you you can talk a lot you know you i mean um you have a lot of knowledge of this stuff people kind of want to be you know showed what's great even if it's not very popular but with that said, I will always go out and seek out popular books, which just comes from being in the community. Um, and even if I have to pay 80 percent, 90 percent, I'll I'll have them for my show for photos and stuff to bring people in. And then while they're there, you get to teach, you know, oh, dude, you should check this guy out that you don't probably don't know about. And, you know, people get hooked on that. And some in some ways, that's like how people get into new artists like. Uh, my friends brought Joe Chiodo stuff last week. Mm -hmm. Now I'm crazy about Joe Chiodo this week. Yeah. I was like, I wouldn't have gotten it if I didn't have at least one of those guys at the live sale. I was like, oh, yeah. And I think that's what hap what makes a great show is not just show just plopping books up. You got to be into it, man. You know? So how do you um, balance I don't really that? worry about so, the setup. Yeah, how do you balance that? So I'm a Dave Stevens fan. You recently had a big Dave Stevens claim sale and, and things like that. How do you balance like finding the books that you love and that you know and being able to talk about it because you want to have that entertaining show but you're also letting these books go i take one or two for myself that's enough <laughs> there you go <laughs> only yeah, the you best. have to right yeah yes, only the best so but i'm into so many things that one or two of the best turns into a box in about five months so it's killer box and anything that's like a vf near min or near mint minus for modern stuff no good I'd rather not have it in my collection. So a lot of it I'll sell uh, to people. That's nice. all. Yeah. And and are, are you grading every single book yourself? Yeah. I've had a lot of experience in it. I mean, I've studied it. Um, I, I'm not going to say who came over my house last week, but a, a CGC, somebody who worked at CGC as a grader was looking through my stuff to grade and I grade everything before I send it out. And he's like, well, you're probably a half a grade under. And I'm not tooting my own horn, but it's nice to hear. This guy is the guy that graded stuff. They don't catch everything and they don't have to. Right. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, I'm trying to catch everything. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but uh, being a, yeah, so I grade everything. I mean, I somebody who doesn't grade for a claim sale, Jesus Christ. Uh, I mean, they're, they're placing so much trust in you. What's the best right. that you can put on a phone or even a screen? Is, you, I mean, hardly anybody ever takes it out of a bag. Right. So you got to describe as much as possible and be as conservative as possible. And that trust will um will come over time with people coming back like i got a good grade off your stuff or i agree with you yeah so. i think that's part that's part of what frustrates me a little bit or, or get proactively preemptively frustrated sometimes like nothing's really happened and i'm already irritated but uh, i there there's experience that i have when i'm watching a live claim sale uh on any platform uh, i'm looking at an auction it doesn't really matter what it is it could just be a static online store and the grades are, you know, they talk about Overstreet, they talk about, they have very specific ranges that really are specific to them and they're selling. And then, but I'm, I'm sitting here going, but then there are some sellers that have to the grade point, very specific grades. And I appreciate okay. that, but it, it feels like the sellers that aren't as precise are getting away with something. And I don't know how to describe yes. this feeling as a buyer, but that you, you mentioned that the trust, the honesty, the that sort of piece is very important to me as a buyer, but mm -hmm. uh, how do you feel? Do you feel sometimes when you're like, you're, you're putting a 9.2 on a book, you're thinking in your head, you know, this could be a nine, four, nine, six, like versus just saying high grade, you know, it's like, I'm going to show the book, say it's high grade. I'm going to pull it back and say, now let's start the bidding. <laughs> and I, I hate that stuff. Like I, I right. can't, like you said, I can't really see the book. So I'm trusting you and your skills. And I haven't met you. Like, what, what right. kind of goes through your head when, when you're grading books and, and trying to be precise? I want to I want to be the seller that I would buy from. 
That's all mm-hmm. I ever say. So it frustrates me. It does because un- uneducated buyers are getting fleeced. And I have, I have great disdain for sellers, a lot of sellers because of it. So basically it's like, I would rather, my, my quote to myself is, I would rather have 20 people in my room that are educated and really care about comics that buy from me instead of 80 looky loose and they're buying some book I call mid grade. I want the educated buyers. You kind of have to just think about yourself only if you allow all those other claim sales where these people are making tons of money for selling garbage uh, to in, infest your mind. Uh, you'll stop doing it. That's it. Just think about yeah. think about yourself and what you want to have. No, it's a good point. Is just not get distracted by what everybody else is doing. Now we've talked about uh, kind of like what makes a good live claim sale in general. But I was wondering if you could talk about like specific comics that you feel like either when you're gathering them for a sale or you're, you're out in the wild trying to to find books or buy books, do you have, and it could be specific issues, titles or or anything or genres. Do you have some like where you see that and you're like, this is going to sell like it, these are just like no brainers. People are always looking for it. What, What type of comics always sell? Um, yeah, I'm just always, I mean, it covers sell, obviously. And we are, so just to make it clear, we're in March of 2024. If you watch this in a year, it will not be the same books. So obviously, uh, 70s hard, huge at the moment. Anything Dave Stevens, even if it's like not even great, will sell. Certainly priced right. Good underground covers. I've been, I've been grabbing a lot of those. I just bought some yet today, actually. And then like booby covers, unfortunately. Uh, right. There's things that are out, like, you know, there's cycles. There's like X Men, Burn X Men two years ago, Claremont X Men. You couldn't, all dealers would say, I got to re up on my Burn and Claremont X Men every show. And then also um, mid grade Silver Age would sell still, doesn't sell now. You are going to have to always uh, kind of put things away that you wanted to sell uh, for live claim shows that, and, and bring out things that are popular that you had away. So you're, you're always just, we're in the market. We're collectors, right? I mean, you you grade stuff all the time, and um, you know what's coming. You know what's good for uh, that's selling, and you try and gauge your. You try to uh, gear your shows that way. That's it. But there that's are there's like there's a lot of stuff that I'm not going to show for like two three years because nobody wants it. <laughs> yeah, I mean you timing. T- timing yeah. is huge. Uh, yeah, yeah, and and I'm. I mean, you mentioned uh, Chiodo Stevens. You know, some of it is just how does this get on my radar? And then that's what I'm into. And then it's like, how do you know what people are into? And it, do, do you feel like you you can almost like take the temperature based on one claim sell after another? You're like, I, I feel the shift of like oh, yeah. people moving towards. Yeah, I would well, imagine. There's a, there's a couple dealers as well. There's one dealer specifically that is so good at this, like, like this really weird stuff. Uh-huh. And when he talks about it on our show, the people that watch get into it more and then it starts becoming more of a thing. And even yeah. I get influenced. I'm like, oh man, that that is cool. So right. I start grabbing more of those and bring them. And you know, they see they see how passionate you are about it, and it gets people excited too. I, I don't collect anything terrible, <laughs> <laughs> so right. you should buy the things that I like to put up. <laughs> that makes you know, sense. There's yeah, hardly any yeah. 90s in there. So you, you're <laughs> starting to talk about a little bit of like the buyer, the buyer experience. And I yeah. was wondering, like, from your perspective, you, early on, you talked about like, your your ideal audience having those, those 20 educated buyers in the room. But I was wondering if you could expand on that a little bit in terms of what would you recommend for a buyer that they see you on Instagram, and you're, you're posting a message and saying, um, this Friday night, Bucky's books live, live claim sale. You're showing a preview. Like I get that from a buyer. Like, okay, I'm going to look and see what you're previewing, what you're going to have. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to get my wallet ready, all of that stuff. But like to, to have the most optimal experience as a buyer, do you have any tips or recommendations to make it a good experience all the way through the, the transaction? Oh yeah, man. I mean, it's, that is, that's how you know you're a pro when you're only, when you're watching your own videos and you say, all right, what can I do better? And you're always thinking about. So uh, I would say, uh, first of all, grading is number one. Got to say, uh, always great and always great conservative. Prices need to be fair. Number two, that's the age old. That's anything. But as far as the claim sales go, I found that handheld is the best mm-hmm. instead of the tripod. It's a little bit more intimate. 
Um, but you have to have a good cameraman that's always scanning and wide. Mm -hmm. So you as a buyer, you're even me, I, I buy stuff off of claim sales too. When they stay wide and they're always going nice and slow, you're you're choosing. We all want to choose, you know. So they don't want to be focused on the book that that's in their hand always at one at that time. And uh, because you're like, you know, you're a hunter, basically choosing your book. The more books that you can show in a slow, like, you know, very, um, you know, you can see the prices and the grades. That's right. the better way to do it for the buyer. I like to do sound effects. <laughs> right. It makes it more fun for that everybody. Is... No, I love that. Uh, yeah. And uh, cool, some yeah. giveaways and, um, and, you know, bundle deals, you know, and then giving, giving good breaks on stuff that you have room on. I have indicators on some, on some of my tags that I'm not going to tell anybody about where I can go really low. And then there's just some things I can't. And when I have, when I can see that thing on the tag, I'm like, Oh, I could take off a lot for this person with their offer. So taking off good offers. And then after the show invoicing properly and always being in communication, pictures of the books, uh, very right. clear, which methods of payment you can take and then shipping in a timely manner. It's all that stuff. And it's, it's a, and then packing. I always like, you know, handwrite a little something and package really properly. I got my packing down. Perfect. Everything makes it to where they're at. There are, there's like six or seven facets of things as a buyer that you want to see that's behind the scenes, you know? Yeah. Makes sense. The, no, I appreciate all of that insight. Uh, I, I want to just kind of leave us here. It, maybe if I'm asking this for a friend, if someone were to consider jumping into live claim sales, what, what do you think would be the first thing that they should take care of beyond like, I, I've got my comics and I feel like I've, okay, I've got my stack of Dave Stevens. I've got my burn X-Men and I'm ready to go camera. Yes. Microphone. But like, I've seen your setup and it's very impressive, but what is that one thing? Like, don't even consider a live claim sale unless you have blank. Like, what is that one thing? A host. Yeah. You you do hosts first. So it takes some of the pressure off. Gotcha. Okay. I would Great always advice. recommend a host, a good one, uh, if you can get them. And then after that, then you get the confidence to do your own. But I don't think anything tangible. That's pretty much intangible, like getting a host. But yeah, everything else can be, I mean, you could, if you're not worried about, getting a lot of viewers and man, you want to practice, you don't need or hardly anything, you know, yeah. tell your friend that. we Will do. Um, <laughs> and you, you forgot to mention one creator and I wanted to know, has anyone ever told you that you look like a very young and healthy Frank Miller? Mm. Okay. So I saw that question. <laughs> and so I, I was like, okay, this is one of the questions I was telling my wife. She's like, okay, let's look it up. And she's like, you don't know. Uh, Oh, yeah, you kind of do. I can see it, Lord. especially when he goes like, like one of those. Yes, that, that was it nose. right there. Yes. Okay. And I was like, Jesus Christ, man. I was like, I don't like that <laughs> nose. I don't like that nose, but I can see it. I get John Stewart all the time. Okay, I see that too. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely see that too. Bucky, uh, you know, I was wondering too. While I have you here, I, I was, I was wondering if you, you wouldn't mind showing me yours. Uh, what? Uh, so, I well, uh, like a, a comic. Uh, that maybe uh, you have a story to tell or you have one nearby that you wouldn't mind showing? All right. So uh, my father took me to a convention, my first comic convention in 88, I think. And my first book that I ever bought, I love the Silver Age, even as at like a 12 year old. So this was Batman 182 was the first book that my dad ever bought me. That was uh, Silver Age. Yes. Nice. So I loved it because it's got all those uh, Dick Sprang reprints in there. Yeah. It was probably like a VG just to read it. And I said, I need to find this book. You know, when I become, became more prolific collector, I said, I need to find this book uh, in high grade, like over a nine at least graded for my collection. And uh, I found it took me about, my God, it took me like 11 years. And I, and I wouldn't look all the time, but I found the Pacific Coast pedigree wow. in nine four. That's cool original label never yeah never now, who knows what it could get with a, a clean and press but i uh, this would be like something very personal and yeah. all the investment crap uh would be gone before this yep so to the grave kind of kind of stuff so there's there's different facets there's things for investment that you really like and then there's things that you're like this is why i will collect forever kind of stuff Absolutely. No, I appreciate yeah. you sharing that. I'm looking at that 80 page giant too. And just like, how, how does that get a nine four? That's crazy. 
Okay, it's only All like right. 11 uh, of them. 11 yeah. and nine are better. Yeah. Well, uh, Bucky, we're out of time. Oh, wow. So, that was fast. Uh, well, it, it moves fast. And speaking of moving fast, uh, what we have left is a little bit of rapid fire. But um, I need to make sure. Are you sitting down? Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. Um, I need to know, uh, wire shelving or wood shelving? Mm, wood shelving more preferable because it cuts off the overhead light. Selling online or selling in person? Online. Okay, this one you got to get right. SoCal or NoCal? Oh, there's better dealers in NoCal. Uh, <laughs> but I like, I like SoCal. Me too. Good SoCal. One. All right, this one, this next one, I think uh, go check out Bucky's books on Instagram and go through his pages and, and then this one will make sense but to you and me we'll know what it means garbage brown backed fullbacks or OG badass fullbacks well I think the name says it all OG uh, yes. badass brown backs I can't stand how those. dare they oh, I, I can't stand them I, I, I love the OG ones yeah very yep. cool um <laughs> again uh looking at recent live claim sales of yours Bronze Age Horror is, is DC or Marvel um gonna kill me but it's t it's it's two uh marble for the covers and dc for the interiors i'm okay, going with that that's cheating but i'll accept <laughs> uh planet comics number one or 3d zone space vixens 16 planet comics one i'm gonna do a post today to show why i like it so much love it love it and then the last one uh if if you were listening earlier this one will also make sense uh dark knight returns daredevil born again or wolverine limited series i wish i knew how that guy talked because i do the voice dark knight returns awesome love it uh bucky this has been uh amazing um we we are uh in the end game now we're in the end game now uh and before we we leave uh i would love to just uh, have you once again let folks know where they can find you i think instagram at, at uh, Bucky's books on Instagram is kind of the main place, but uh, yeah. anywhere else that folks can find you or or figure out when your next live claim sale is? Um, no, that's pretty much it. I'm a, I'm a IG guy. I have some stuff on eBay, but it's all nothing significant. So just contact me there if you ever need something. And then uh, all my announcements will be on there. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me today. This has been Thanks. super insightful. It's been great to, to meet you uh, in this format uh, we'll be looking out for your next live claim sale. Uh, really appreciate it. All right. That was awesome. Thanks. See you soon. All right. And there he was, uh, Bucky's Books. Again, look for him on Instagram at Bucky's Books. Uh, if you really, if you want to see what a live claim sale looks like done right, then you're going to want to check out Bucky's Books on Instagram. Thanks for watching. Happy collecting and see you next time.